Let's learn how to light products. First, we're going to do the simple stuff. We're going to light a product in two different ways that always look good. And then I'll show you how problematic glass can be and how to solve that problem so that you always get the best lighting on objects with glass. And finally, I'll show you how to deal with ugly looking lights in reflections. So there's some simple stuff, there's some higher level stuff. And if you follow this video, you will be ready for any lighting endeavor. Let's get started straight away. So this product is pretty much the same all over. It has the same colors and it's not very reflective. This gives us the freedom to light in whatever fashion we would like and get some basics down. Right now we'll show you three different lighting setups and I'm wondering which one you think is best. So this is basically what we start out with. We have this gray scene and we are going to the world properties tab and going to set this background to zero because I don't like this grayish tone. We can better work with the lights without all this extra HDRI type soft lighting. So let's light this with an area light and let's bring it over here first, increase the power and now we can see the model. This is what it looks like. This is probably not going to make people very happy. And the way that we're going to fix that is simply by going over here and placing this light on this side. I'm going to look at it from the camera and now we get a cool rim light and the rim light is helping separate this from the background. So if we increase or decrease the power we can see what this does. Now, on the other side, this is completely dark. So we don't want that. We actually want this to have some light as well. So let's copy this. Let's see, let's place it right over there. So if we look at it, I'm going to scale it down just a little bit and increase the power. Maybe it should be pointing a little bit more towards the side and less towards the middle, something like this. Somewhere over here, we can find a good rotation where we get this cool light streak. And now this looks pretty cool. The rim light should usually be just a little area and not too much. Otherwise it will light it very flatly. Let's just bring it towards the back. And now we get some cool separation on this side and that side all at the same time. We could decrease this and maybe scale it upwards simply to get this light only on this area and that looks pretty cool already but now we have some shadows that we need to get rid of because we actually can't see anything right over there so what i'm going to do simply select this light duplicate it and let's place one right over there as well and this one should be a little bit bigger because it's only supposed to fill in the shadows and it should be soft so if you make it very small something like this it will be pretty harsh but if we just make it a little bit bigger we get some soft shadows right there and we can also decrease the power just to fill it in a bit so this would be too much we can fill it in maybe somewhere like over here. That would be pretty cool. And now I feel like this part is still too dark because this one is a bit too much to the side. Uh, this area stays dark. So let's bring this a little bit more over there in order to fill in that shadow. And now we've got a three point lighting setup. So this one is the key light. This is the rim light on the background. And this is the soft light filling in the shadows. So this is a very simple technique that you can always use to light products. But of course there are some things that we can do. We can increase increase this in order to make this go onto the top as well. So that would look pretty cool. We can also scale it upwards. So it's bringing in some light on the sides, but I'm not going to do that in this case. I like the separation it's bringing right now. So in order to make this lighting setup a little bit more interesting, let's also bring in a plane. Let's E this upward. Let's bevel this. Let's shade this smooth. And now we have a very boring white background. And that is great actually. So now I'm going to press on new add a new material. Perhaps we can make this black. That already looks pretty cool, but I like to have a little bit more control. So if you want to have the product lit in a different way than the background, we can definitely do that simply by selecting all of these lights and adding light linking to it. Now you can add light linking in whatever fashion you would like. I'm going to bring this into a collection called light linking. Uh, if you want to know how to do this, simply select a light, go over to the object properties, go to shading, light linking, press on new, and then you drag in the collection of your object or your object itself. And then the light linking will work on that. I'm going to use Lumio simply because it's a bit faster. I'm going to select the light linking group and the microphone full add light linking. Now we have light linking on this object and it's not working on the background anymore. But if we add a new light right over here and increase its power and now we can get some type of gradient going on here basically two things that we can do we can either just use a area light for this 
and move it on the y-axis get the gradient to look exactly like we wanted to and i think this is pretty cool just rotate it around a bit to get this type of effect and what we can also do is remove this let's bring in a point light bring it right over there and let's add an ies texture so i've added this right now it's a little bit soft so i'm going to increase the power and now we get this cool type of showcase effect going on here now if you want to add a IES texture you can simply go into the shader editor use notes add an IES texture it's a note like IES texture and then bring in your IES texture from external folder go get it so then you get IES textures and you can play around with these and find the one that you like best what we can also do in order to make this a better render is add a mesh add a cube let's go to the shader editor let's delete this principal bsdf and add in a principal volume volume into the volume density 2.02 to make it a little bit less dense and then we can add a light spotlight and then we can add a gobo so if you click on use notes you can add an image texture and you can add your gobo if you have one or you can make one real quickly simply by adding in a Voronoi texture adding this to the strength and bringing these together until you get to the desired result of course you need to increase the power and then increase the contrast in order to get some type of god ray effect now, i'm not going to show you exactly how this works i've got an entire tutorial on that so gobo browser i'm going to apply this preset and now we get some cool god rays and you can have them come in from the side like this which always looks cool or you can undo the rotation and bring it exactly towards the middle so we have one light streak going behind this and some more over there and if you increase the radius it will become a bit more soft which also looks very cool so in a matter of seconds you've learned how to make a three point lighting setup you've learned how to add three types of different backgrounds in order to make it better and i will now show you another way to light this product so we'll delete everything and start anew so let's bring in an area light rotate this on the y-axis Let's make sure that the scale is a little bit bigger. Let's bring this towards the side and let's increase the power. Very good. And now we can do the same for the other side, RZ180, and make sure that it's lit like this. And I think it's a bit too soft. So what we can do is simply decrease the spread just a little bit and then rotate it away until we get those cool lines on the sides. Do the same for this one, very cool. Then we're going to add another light, undo the rotation, RX90, make this one a little bit bigger. And now it's filling in the shadows as well if we turn this off. So this is also a way to light a product. And the finishing touch on this one is actually to add a new area light. And the final light I'm going to bring right over here, Alt-R, it's going to be on the top. Scale it down, should be a bit harder. So increase the power and bring it towards the middle and we can scale it and look at the reflection in there. So the smaller it becomes, the harder the reflection will be, which in this case I like. So we can also scale it on the X axis, something like this, increase or decrease the power. I think this looks pretty good. Once again, you can use light linking in order to separate it from the background and do whatever you would like with this. But this is basically the entire setup. So this is lighting setup number one, and this is lighting setup number two. Let me know which one you like best, and let's continue to the next product. So right here I have a light, and well, it's a light model actually, and it looks like this. Let's first turn on the world lighting. Pretty uninteresting looking, to be honest, and we have to make sure that this looks good. So let's set this to zero once again. I'm going to bring in a background first. So let's bring in a background like this. Let's select the back and bring that upwards. Select this area, control B, and let's give this a bevel. Auto smooth, so now we actually have a background to work with. Now in the case of glass, it is quite hard to make it look very good because as you can see already with this light, it's creating some very harsh and uninteresting looking shadows and it's not really the best shape to use so one of the things that we can do is set this to a disc this already looks a bit more natural why well most natural lights aren't square if you think about it there really aren't any square lights except for those that are man-made so it immediately gives this sense of artificialness uh, if you use a square light and you can see it in the reflections one of the things that we can do is simply place a light somewhere over there now let's add another area light and let's 
RX RY90. Let's bring it to the side. And one of the things that I like doing is simply going into the shader editor to the glass material. Uh, let's forget about all of that. And we can play around with the IOR and the roughness. We can play around with this until we get to the desired result. I actually recommend doing this with glass. I mean, throw physics out of the window, I know, but uh, it's simply sometimes better to do that to get a better looking result. Now, one of the ways to really improve the lighting of a glass object is to add in an HDRI, which I'm going to do. So let's add one. Now, this already looks a lot better. We can try different ones. We can see quite a lot of the HDRI in this. So we can tackle that by increasing the roughness and making it a bit more like this, but it's also becoming quite hazy and I don't really like that. So we really want to keep it like this. But if we want to blur this HDRI, all we need to do is go to the shader editor, go to the world, and then right here, let's make a small little setup on this side. Let's remove the HDRI mapping. The generated can go into a mix color. Then we can use a noise texture. Noise texture generated into the vector and the generated into, uh, I believe it is the A. And then the color into B. This can be set to subtract. Subtract result in the vector. Increase the skill by a lot. And then let's play around with this. Increase it to 10,000. So yeah, we pretty much blurred this entire HDRI. If you bring it back, it will be less blurred. So let's blur it all the way and use a better HDRI, like a city, for example. And of course we have our area light, which we can play around with like this, basically turn it around. And now we get this weird looking reflection on the side. Bring it maybe somewhere over there. Three. Until we get this cool little small streak going on here. And of course a light from the top. Hold R. And now this is making a little bit more sense. Go into the camera, viewport display, passepartout, all the way up. And of course we can remove this by adding light linking. I'm not going to show that all the time. Uh, maybe we can add a light inside. Maybe that would be funny. So let's add a little point light, increase the radius. Let's give it a bit of an orangey color. And now let's go back into the material, to the object, play around with the IOR until we get something that looks pretty good something like this. Now I don't like the way this looks right here. So let's go over into that area light. I believe it is this one. Decrease the size. And let's increase it on the Z axis like this. And basically it's just a game of trying to get accurate looking reflections. Now I don't like the circular one anymore. Uh, I think it's a bit too much. She's just throwing too much in there. So we should make it smaller and maybe even scale it up in a way that is disproportionate. And what I mean by that is that I'm scaling this ellipse in order to get a different shape. Now we are starting to get to the point where I'm like, yeah, this looks kind of good. And since we changed the HDR texture, we probably should add the same setup again. So before it looks like this, which of course is way too much, but if we blur the HDRI, we can get to a place where it actually looks kind of decent. Now we can also remove the plane, bring a light right behind it. Scale this up until we get this cool light all around and then just decrease the spread until we get something that looks like this. So we can still see the edges and we can also do that on the top simply by rotating it around a bit. We can give this plane whatever color we would like. Now one thing you could try to do if you want to have a colored background like this but you don't like the fact that it's having too much impact in the glass itself is simply adding a light pad note. Light pad note on the floor, by the way. So let's select the floor, light pad note. And then we are going into the principal BSDF. Let's make this wide again, saturation down. Control zero to add a mix shader. And now let's try different of these rays. So the camera array already works. So now we have this white reflection instead of the blue reflection. So with the is camera array, we can make sure that we get other another type of reflection in this glass, despite the background material. Of course, if you want to make it blue, but it should be a different type of blue, you can also do that. So let's say that the background is black, simply set it to black and then increase it 
until we get to a point where we're like, all right, that's pretty cool. Now, as you can see, this is quite a bit more difficult to get right than the other shot because that one uses a very rough material. It's very easy to light that. But when you're dealing with glass, at least these are some tricks that you can use. So we've blurred an HDRI, we have played around with the light pad node in order to get different type of reflections in the glass if we would like that. And we also changed the light shapes accordingly. So let's turn off some lights one by one. I think the one in the back was maybe a bit too much. Something like this feels a bit better to me. And if we really want to get that highlight on the back, what we can also do is go into this material, then go to sheen, add the weight and decrease the roughness. And now we get this little edge highlight around this part and we can decide what color it is right here. And we can also do that for the glass naturally. So go over to the sheen. So if you want to do that for this light as well, on the glass, we can add another setup, which is the light path node with a ray depth into an add matte node. This goes into the factor of the mix shader, which is being driven by a transparent BSDF in the top one and a principal BSDF with a roughness, very low, an IOR that you decided yourself and the transmission all the way up. If we then want to add some sheen, we can definitely do that. Add the weight, decrease the roughness, and now we get that cool edge highlight for our glass as well, if we want to do that without getting ugly reflections. So now you've learned four special techniques in order to light glass more accurately. You can change the shape of the light, you can blur HDRIs, you can add sheen by using this type of glow effect, which is basically like some sort of Fresnel. And we also had a look at how you can change reflections of the material that it is reflecting from. So those are four high level techniques that you can use in order to manipulate your glass to look better. So let's go on to the third one. So I've got this Rolex right here and I will turn off this collection so you can actually see what I'm going to do. Right here, area light, let's bring this upwards. So you can see that this area light is bringing in quite some harsh reflections right here. And this is a problem that you will run into more often when you have reflective surfaces. You will really see this type of lighting in the reflection. And of course you can play around with it until it kind of disappears and that really doesn't give you that much control over your lighting. So what I like to do is actually bring in a gradient and then I will first show you and then I'll show you how the gradient works. You can play around with these settings in order. So now it's quite harsh like this. But if you play around with this, you can make it feather over the reflection. And in this way you have more control over the way the light looks. So that's actually what we're trying to achieve. Now the way this works, is actually relatively simple. It is a gradient texture and the gradient texture is being driven by a map range node. The map range is going into an emission and the transparent is going into the mix shader. So let's bring in a plane, for example. Let's bring in a gradient. Basically, if we now play around with this, we are determining how far this line is going. So if you have reflective surfaces and you're running into a problem where basically it looks like this harsh line, which you definitely don't want, then simply use a gradient in order to get rid of it. All right, something like this, and that will make for a much better shadow. Also, one other thing that you might not want to do oftentimes is light from the bottom. Let me show you what I mean. And the reason for that is basically because we are used to seeing things like this, because light oftentimes comes from the top. Your light in your room is probably coming from the top. The light even uh, on the dinner table is being hung on ropes to get this light above your table. Rarely ever do you place a small light on the floor. Lights also get hung up on walls, for example. The sun doesn't shine from beneath. The lamps don't shine from beneath. So most of the times you want to avoid lighting something from the bottom. I've placed quite a bit of effort creating all the free courses that are available on this channel, which are around five now, I believe. I was simply hoping that maybe you can check out some of the things that I created, such as Auto Animate or the King of Light Bundle Pack, and maybe if that's something for you, you can help me as a creator by supporting yourself. Thanks for watching and you definitely don't want to miss the next one, which is going to unveil all the secrets about photorealism. So, see you there.